Hey Mr. Bill Pelker peeps, welcome to the vlog. This vlog is gonna be the post WSOP week one as we go back for another week and then another week. So <laughs> I would say this past week was marked by extremes, uh, some highs, some lows, some goods, some really bad, some terribles. So let's start with the positives. And there were many. Uh, probably number one on the list was just the people that I met. Uh, a lot of people said positive things about my videos. There's a number of people who had emailed me or commented on uh, one of my vlogs, said they wanted to meet me, get a picture with me, or one guy, uh, Mark Seymour, uh, took us out to dinner, took me and Billy and Stone out to dinner, then we played craps together, and then we sweated him in a big tournament. Billy won for the trip. I think he won about $2,000 highlighted by a sixth place finish in the daily, although that was a kick in the gut too. I think I mentioned that on, a pre on the previous vlog. I won in every single cash session that I played, which was good. I think I played four or five of them. And I also won the vast majority of the single table satellites I played. I'd never played one before, and Billy played in a few and said, Dad, this is the easiest money ever. Billy won outright the first one he played. He split the second one, and he did really well in those, and he got me to play in them. I either won or split my first three, then lost a couple, and then uh, had the vast majority of my last one. So cashed in three out of six, and I did real well on those. And me and Billy had a fun time together. We had some big laughs. <laughs> I sat on the bed and broke it. <laughs> we laughed for five minutes. Uh, had some nice dinners together. Uh, got together with Stone and Rob and myself and Billy and some other friends and we had dinners and beers and all that kind of stuff and that was just really awesome. Did I mention you guys? Oh yeah, you guys were awesome. I already said that but I just again the outpouring of uh, support for me and Billy. Uh, lots of people recognize Billy also so it was uh, it was really really great. Oh, the not so good. Not so good would be, I have never whiffed a World Series before. I'd always cast. I was 0 for 3 this first week. I bubbled the seniors, which was really, really a horrible kick in the gut, because uh, I thought I would do really, really well there. My league did very, very poorly. Uh, Carl, myself, Rob, all whiffed. Stone did get a min cash in the Millionaire Maker, which is great because it was his very first tournament at the World Series of Poker, so the cash is pretty good. But uh, for the most part, we did very, very poorly. The most frustrating thing for me was not necessarily not cashing. It was that I did things that were not right, that weren't very smart. Actually, most of the time I played very, very well, but I did something that I lecture people on not to do, and that is make the big mistake. Man, I hope I'm not turning into the guy that plays pretty well, pretty solid, but makes the big mistake every time and has no chance because of the big mistake. I just hate that, and I certainly hope I'm not turning into that guy. The frustration of bubbling the seniors event was just awful. Um, I would have had a really, really big stack if it weren't for really, really bad luck, and you'll hear about that here shortly. Even with that, I could have played it a different way if I'd have wanted to, and I would have at least cashed, um, although I was trying to get a lot of chips, so I, I'm not so upset about that, just the unfortunate variance in that one tournament. And as I said on the previous vlog, Billy found out what it feels like to get kicked in the gut when you have a chance for a lot of money, and you do well, but not well relative to how much you could have gotten. So on Wednesday, they had a daily seniors, the $250 event before the Thursday bracelet event. Hey guys, I'm firing the Rio Seniors 250. All right, buddy. The first table I was at was really fun, very interesting. A guy named Todd and his buddy Richard. Uh, his buddy Richard watches my vlogs and came over and said hello. In one of the early hands, I beat Todd with uh, Ace-9 when he had, I think he flopped a set, and I got a flush on the river. Pretty fortunate. So with blinds at 300-600, I have 28,000. I have Ace of Clubs, Queen of Clubs in the hijack. So the plus one makes it 1,200. I make the call. The cut off the button, the small blind, and the big blind all call. So the flop with 4,200 comes King of Clubs, Jack of Clubs, three of diamonds. So I flopped a royal flush draw <laughs> and the nut flush draw. So it checks to the button, uh, he makes it a thousand, the big blind calls, and I make the call. 
Uh, the turn is the two of clubs, very, very good for me. It checks to the button. He makes it 3,500. The other guy folds. I raise it to 10,000. He shoves all in for 13,500. Of course, I snap call. He has pocket threes for a set of threes. The river, four of clubs, and I win a really nice hand. Second break at the seniors. Uh, I have 36,000. I took a big hit. I was up to 52. Uh, hey, it is what it is. And hopefully we'll come back and start crashing again. Early on, I also got quad tens to stack somebody off, and I ended up having a really, really good stack uh, for the middle part of the tournament. So a guy joined our table that had a quite a big stack. I called him Frenchy. He was from France, spoke uh, good English, but he had definitely a French accent. He was really, really a fun and very aggressive player to play against. So the next couple of hands I'm gonna describe here are both against my buddy Frenchy. Uh, interesting hands, interesting player. So I had watched Frenchy play a few number of hands and he was very aggressive, bluffy, uh, willing to get his chips in there. So on this hand, I am under the gun with pocket nines. Blinds are 1,000, 1,500, 1,500. Uh, I make it 6,000. Frenchy makes it 15,500 with another one of his three bets. I, it comes back to me, I shove all in for 48K. He thinks about it for a minute, makes the call. He has ace queen and it runs out good for me. And I beat Frenchy in the first one. So the second big one against Frenchy was blinds are again, 1,000, 1,500, 1,500. I have 105K now with king of diamonds, queen of hearts, and I'm under the gun. So I raise it up to 4,000. Frenchy in the cutoff, three bets once again. He does it all the time. He made 11,500. I make the call. The flop comes ace, ace, 10, and it goes check, check. The turn is a seven. Uh, I make it 3,000. He raises it up to 8,000. I make the call. He bluffs all the time. The river, another seven. Uh, I check. He makes it 15,000. I tank for a while. I make the call with the nut no pair. He has seven eight for the small full house. Third break, uh, seniors uh, daily. Uh, it's been a crazy table, wild roller coasters. I have 76,000. Uh, I think there's about, I don't know, maybe 120 players left. I'm right about average. Uh, really a fun but crazy table. Well, things have certainly turned for the worse. We got a table change. I lost a couple of flips. I have 22,000 in blinds with three and six, and we are 10 away from the money. <laughs> it really wasn't coming to min cash, but maybe I need to get there first. We'll see. Well, I hate poker, and poker sucks. How do you like that? I just busted 91st when they paid 88 in the seniors. I had lost two flips. I thought I had 400,000 chips. It's a bad game. Don't let your children play this game. It's a bad game. So the tournament paid 88 players. I came in 91st. Bubble, 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 bubble. And Mark did really, really well. He uh, came in second in one of the Rio dailies for 18,000. And we got to sweat him until 3.30 in the morning. So that was a great time. But the most important tournament for me of this trip was the WSOP Seniors Bracelet event. I have done extremely well in this event the two times that I had played it. They changed the structure this year to go from 5,000 chips to 20,000 chips. It really, really should help me a bunch because it's such a soft field to start with. And so I was very excited about this one. And it did not disappoint as the first table I went to was extremely soft. First break at the seniors event, uh, I couldn't have started any better than I am. I have 36K at first break, uh, partly powered by one hand where I had quad jacks. Uh, in fact, I've won three times with jacks. There was one guy, one player, who happened to be immediately to my left, unfortunately, who was really good. The rest of the players, it's a couple guys that were okay, mostly very, very soft. And I had one job, one job. Don't get into pots with the guy to my left who was really, really good. We should be picking on the other players ourselves and leaving each other alone. Did I do that? Of course not. Idiot. 
This was the most disappointing thing to me about the seniors event to start with. Again, a very soft table. I could have had so many chips. I lost 53,000 chips on two bluffs to the really good player to my left. That's just so stupid. I could have had 70,000 chips when our table broke. Instead, I had 21,000. Just dumb. So coming back from the dinner break, I only had 21,000 chips. We started with 20,000, but I came back to an unbelievably good situation. It was a new table, so nobody knew me. The big blind was gone, had not returned from the table, and I'm under the gun with pocket aces. So I did what the worst amateur players would ever do in that spot, not try to steal the blind. I limped in. I absolutely know that somebody's gonna try and steal this pot, and it wasn't long. The middle position one made it 2100, middle position two called, and the cutoff called, and it came back to me. I raised it up to 9,500. Unfortunately, everybody folded. But what an easy way to pick up 7,000 chips uh, and increase my stack by 33%. A great situation. So last break of the day, I fought my way back to 36,000 for being down to what? 18,000 or something like that. So last break of the day, two more hours to go. Let's hope that I chip up a little bit. Let's bag a good one tonight. So I had one more good hand before the end of bagging on day one. I had pocket jacks over ace king for a nice pot. I'm not seeing her. Oh, she's bringing me my, my seat. Well, after a rough start at the WSP in the first couple of tournaments, I did bag and tag in the seniors for 81K, which is probably going to be above average. Uh, let's go back to day two tomorrow and crush it. Hello, oh, Wednesday night Poker hey. League player, Craig Grisberg. <laughs> day, day two, seniors. He has 143,000, he's doing well. He's the guy to be, he's the guy to watch. I'm the guy that knocked out Eric Seidel. He did. <laughs> Good job, Craig. All right. Two of the seniors, we're getting ready to get fired up here. Uh, I was just talking to Craig Grisberg. Carl Fry is still in. Uh, we got about five minutes to go. I have 81K. I am hoping to run that baby up and make some real money in this tournament. So we will see. Hey man, how you doing? Oh, found the senior. <laughs> Fellow was a poker league player, right? Carl Fry. We got two minutes till the tournament starts. Carl also made day two. A little bit short. Oh boy, is it a grind. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Run that up, all right? Never, never been in trouble. Played one bad hand, but I just can't, I just can't get any uh, track. Yeah, but day, day two is different, right? All right, good luck, buddy. Thank you. All right, all right, bye. All right, so the number one goal, of course, is to really do well in the tournament. But you know what? Enjoy the experience. This is just great. A lot of fun. Good players. And it's the World Series. It only happened once a year. Here we go. So I ended the day two. I actually got a pretty good table to draw. I had 81,000 chips. Uh, the big stack had 121,000. He was on my right, and I was the second largest stack at the table. The guy to my right comes to the table and said, hey, Mr. Bill, I emailed you last week to see if you were playing in the seniors, and I was hoping to come and see you, and here we are sitting right next to each other. <laughs> it was actually quite funny. Uh, his name is Bob Damon. Bob, thank you for watching my vlog. Uh, we didn't get to play very long because our table only lasted probably 20, 25 minutes, and then we broke. But I did play a couple hands against Bob. Uh, one time he raised, I three bet him, and came all the way back around, he folded. Um, second time I played against him, he raised. I three bet him again. This time he called, and he must have connected pretty well with the flop because the flop came and he bet pretty large. I ended up having, I think, ace king or ace queen didn't connect, and I ended up having to fold. About five minutes before our table broke, another guy, John Carter, who had seen me in the hallway a few times, and he said, "Mr. Bill, I love your videos." He came to our table. John, it was nice to talk with you and play with you for a few minutes also. Thank you for watching. So I then had a table change to a what ended up being a very, very good table. Very first hand, I came into the big blind and somebody said, sorry about the big blind. I said, hey, it's okay, because I'm an expert at playing the big blind and I'm gonna win this hand. It was funny because it checked all the way around small blind. He completed, I raised, he made the call. Uh, I had king, queen, flop came jack, seven, four. He checked, I bet, and he folded. So good start. The very, very next hand, I'm in the small blind, 72,000 with pocket kings. The hijack limped in, came around to me. I made it 5,000. 
came all the way back to him. He shoved all in for 37K. Of course I snap called. He had pocket jacks. Their board ran out queen, nine, nine, seven, four. And I picked up a really, really nice pot. So I'm in the big blind with ace of diamonds, queen of clubs, I have 100K. The chip leader who's in middle position makes it 8K. Everybody else folds. I make the call. The flop with 19,000 in the pot is ace of clubs, jack of clubs, uh, four of diamonds. I check, he makes it 15,000. I had seen this guy, continuation bet, probably 100%, so I made the call. Thought about raising here, I'm almost always got the best hand, uh, but he did have me covered. So on the turn with 49,000 in the pot, it comes the three of hearts. It goes check, check. Okay, now I know I'm way ahead. Uh, the river is a seven of diamonds. I check though. He makes it 25,000. I am very, very underrepped here. I make the call and he has pocket sevens and hit a set on the river. Ouchie. So I lost all 45,000 chips on that one hand. Ugh, ouch. First break, I have 113,000. Uh, I had it up, up to 130 and I got bad beat. I'm at a really, I moved to a really tough table. I am 113,000, which is quite a bit, uh, well, a little bit above average, and I am the third shortest. Uh, but hey, you gotta win all the chips, so being at a table with a lot of, a lot of chips is not necessarily a bad thing. All right, let go. And once again, the, the most aggressive, maybe the best player at the table was immediately to my left. Gosh. So like on the first eight hands I saw him play, he either opened or raised on seven of the eight. The guy can't have it every single time. He was just using his chip stack and bullying because he could and he would, and although there were some players fighting back, uh, he was doing it every time anyway. So I decided that if I get a hand against him, I'm not gonna let him bully me and I'm gonna show him what I'm gonna do. Blinds are 600, 1200. I'm in the big blind with 112K with four six of hearts. The end of the gun maniac makes it 5100. The cutoff calls, also a very good player with a big stack. So it's 2700 more to me to win 13,100. I think it's a pretty easy call. I make the call. The flop with 17,100 in the pot comes eight of hearts, four of spades, two of hearts. I flop middle pair and a flush draw. Uh, I check the crazy guy, maniac to my left, makes it 9K. The other guy folds. I think for a minute and think, do I want a three bet here to a reasonable amount? No, I don't. I'm going to put this guy to the test. I shove all in for 107,000. And he absolutely tanks and tanks and tanks, probably three or four minutes. Eventually folds his hand. I'm sure it probably was an overpair. Uh, he asked me, do I have anything good? He said, of course I have something good. I wouldn't shove in without something good, would I? <laughs> Anyhow, after that, he played much, much more carefully against me. In fact, I've got another hand here in a minute. We're gonna go over where he played way more carefully. So I thought it was a very, very good thing uh, what I did there. Um, it got him off my back. So the next important hand, I'm in the small blind with 130K. That means the big blind is my friend who is very aggressive. Uh, I have seven of diamonds, seven of clubs. The under the gun makes it 6,200. Comes around to me, I make the call, and here it is. The maniac folds. I don't think he ever would have done that before. Uh, the flop with 13,000 comes ace of spades, queen of spades, seven of spades. I flop a set, but it's all three uh, spades. It goes check, check. The turn is the three of diamonds. Uh, I lead out for 6,200. He makes the call. The river with 25,400 is the jack of hearts. I check. He makes it 10,000. I make the call. He has ace jack offs for two pair, so I win a really, really big, important pot. Okay, here's another hand against the, my friend who is very, very aggressive. I'm in the cutoff with jack of spades, 10 of spades. I have 157K. Uh, average is only 101K, maybe. Um, I make blinds are 600, 1200, 1200. I make it 2400. The button, our maniac friend, aggressive boy, uh, makes it 9,000. I make the call. I'm the only one. The flop with 24,000 in the pot comes 10 of diamonds, eight of diamonds, seven of hearts. I uh, flop gutter ball top pair. Uh, I check, he bets 20,000. 
Again, this guy's so aggressive, I think a pair here can't simply fold, so I make the call. The turn with 64,000 in the pot is the king of hearts. Ooh, boy, that hits all over him. I check, he checks back. Very interesting. The river, seven of clubs. I check, he checks again. He said he was really scared of that king and thinking I was maybe uh, had, a, had a set of kings. I would never play a set of kings that way, but he doesn't know that. He had pocket aces. Wow, I could have lost a whole lot more chips uh, than I did right there. But it still hurt. I lost 45,000. Uh, not a good hand for me. So we are one hand from the dinner break. We are at 899 players. We pay 888. I have 105,000 chips, and I believe the average is 115,000 at this time. I'm under the gun with ace of spades, king of spades. Blinds are at 15, 3,000, 3,000. I make it 8,500. Folds all the way around to one of the bigger stacks in the cutoff. He raises me up to 22,500. Everybody else folds, it comes back to me, and now I have a decision to make. I know it's the bubble. He knows it's the bubble. He knows that I might be raising just to try and get chips. I know that he might be three betting me just to get chips, and I've got a premium hand. So my decision here is whether to smooth call, play it safe, make sure that I at least make the money, or raise him up and put the pressure on him to see if he can call me. If he has me dominated with aces or kings, he does. Otherwise, I don't know how he could ever call him. So, I shove it all in there. 105,000 chips, and he probably tanks for two, three, four minutes, and eventually says, I call. He has pocket tens which I, just surprises me to no end that he would call with pocket tens, but he does. The flop comes, ace, jack, six, and I have him absolutely smoked. I am a 90% favorite. The turn comes a queen, still he's got very few outs, only three, and the river comes a king, and he gets Broadway and I am knocked out of the seniors tournament when I was a 90% favorite after the flop, a 90% favorite after the turn. So, so disappointing. I'm the bubble boy, bubble boy. Not the stone cold bubble, but bubble enough. Mm. So disappointing. I win that hand and I have a huge amount of chips and can actually make a really good run. But poker is what it is. Sometimes poker sucks, and that is one of the times that it really sucks. People, what do you think if you're a 90% favorite and you lose all your chips? It stinks. If that stinks, it sucks. I'm the bubble. Makes me whine. I'm not very happy. I'm not too fine. So our buddy Mark Seymour from Australia gave me some advice. I had texted him and said, I simply can't win a race. This is before the seniors event. His advice was, why are you getting into races? Shouldn't you be avoiding races? And actually, it's very, very good uh, advice. Yes, I need to win some races, but should I not avoid races? Uh, I didn't necessarily do that on this trip, and even like the two seniors events that I um, ended up getting knocked out on, I had a lot of races. Uh, I am going to take that to heart though and think about what Mark has said because he was a very, very good player. And Mark, I appreciate the advice. And think about what does it mean to not get into races? Uh, Mark had suggested maybe it means playing small ball a little bit uh, like Negranu does. Um, again, I'm going to look into that and see if I can not study some of that and maybe not get in as many races and only get it in when I've really got a dominating hand. Of course. When you're 90% favored, you're expected to win, right? Here we go. All right, Mr. Bell Poker Peeps, that's gonna do it for this vlog. Thank you very, very much for watching. Oh, as you can tell, we are here in Vegas for our second week. Woo! We got Dane, myself, Billy, Brent. Brent got us a free room at the Cosmopolitan all week. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo! Anyhow, you guys have a great, blessed week, and we will see you soon. We will keep you up to date on how we do at the World Series of Poker, week number two. All right, bye. See you later.